getting on board this Karen meme, even though it's late. And uh, on top of that, not a huge fan of it because it's so late and you see so many people go, Classic Karen! No, 99% of those are accurate. Which I guess is why it's important to discuss this. It's not the fact that I'm just doing it to get on the coattails of something that's already blown past. That's not the reason here. We need to discuss the reason for the popularity of it. Which I think is that it really encapsulates the middle class as an entity. And... To some degree, obviously, the upper class, but really, that is the, that haircut, the fact that she's always just got a coffee in her hand, those horrible sunglasses, you don't see that that much up there. You'll see those 80s perms, um, you know, Lucy Turnbull's hair, but that eh, to the side. Very middle class. I think, really, what is going on in the psychology of Karen, and having met someone called Karen before in my life who was a Karen... Ugh, the memories. Used to say this a lot, that lemon grab quote of just being like, This is unacceptable! She was a manager that I had at Target. Oh, what heady days. Putting up those bath salts and then everybody just like, you know, getting ransacked for Mother's Day. Wow. Such imaginative gifts. Anyway, um, right, so. What happens with the Karen meme is that she is always with the, you know, the, the classic let me see your manager. What is going on there? It's a dissatisfaction in the present moment. It's always just something really simple that you can just get on with your day and completely forget about it, and the average person would, but there's a certain type of person that's like, no! Nah! And you know what? You can tell just from her response to that, it's like, I ordered watermelon in this boost juice, you gave me rock! That is the dear giveaway of somebody in life who is not doing well in every other area of it, in that they are carrying that psychology to every other part of their life. It's that classic relationships uh, quote, right? That, you know, you carry yourself wherever you go in life. That is exactly what is happening with Karens. Karens are dissatisfied in the moment. As a result of being dissatisfied in the moment, no moment they can just properly enjoy. There's not a moment of their life that they properly enjoy. And think about it from her perspective. Let's, let's, let's be really sorry for Karen right, right now, right? Boo. It's very sad. Think about it from her perspective. Imagine getting up in the morning every day and the first thing you might just be like, I need new peach shiller, pillow sheets. And got there eventually, huh? I need new pillow sheets. Uh. So going to brush your teeth. Uh, this toothbrush is getting a little wobbly. Uh. All day, nothing is good enough for you. Everything always has to have an issue with it, and as a result, it is dragging down on you personally. Now, remember when we talked before about state transferal, that when you meet one of these Karens, your response is, ugh, what a bitch. She is emanating that energy. <laughs> now we get into the hippie part. She's emanating that energy, and as a result of emanating that energy, you're kind of feeling the way that she feels on the inside. So the reason that you are so repulsed by her is because she finds everything so repulsive. It has that opposite magnet approach of just putting two to two together, but they just go... <laughs> now that's good, because on the plus side that you can understand that if you flip that, and you make yourself all happy and la da in life, you are going to go further than a Karen. You are going to be liked by people when you meet across them, right? Because the same things, the exact same things that a Karen sees where, I don't know, the, I ordered more foam on this cap, extra foam. You know what happens to most people? Most people in that situation, they go, oh, okay, I guess I didn't have it, oh well. And then they move on with their life. Even if it costs them an extra 50 cents because in the grand scheme of things, it's not worth getting upset about it. That's the whole point that these people need to understand that they never will, but anyway, but just, just, just as a case study for you, if you are getting upset by little things in life, there is a flow that you are bringing with yourself that you can easily like start moving downstream and the rest of your life you just start looking for things to be disappointed by and as a result you find life disappointing and as a result of finding life disappointing not only are you more repulsive to people but the other thing is that your life starts to downwardly spiral if you are getting hung up about these tiny little issues in life that's what happens to you 
You know, you don't have the energy to think about big picture stuff because you're thinking about how you got screwed over on this tiny little thing. And so that becomes your main focus in life of just like, oh, I'll get you back for no, I'm never coming to this place again. I'm writing a bad review on Yelp. It can consume you. Now, obviously, as a political commentator, I go down that Karen hole all the time, constantly. My whole life is that. It's just a, a, a constant meditative practice that I think I learned from Eckhart Tolle, which is that the key to enlightenment is to, no matter what the circumstances are, be grateful for it because it is a moment of your life and it will pass. But what won't pass is the attitude that you bring with it. Your attitude will start to get reinforced over a period of time. So there are people, for instance, and I know them, that have been homeless. And they were completely happy with that. They saw it as a life experience. Now, the f I think that one of the main factors of why some people remain homeless and some people get out of it is because of that thing that, you know, you have a success barrier in life and you have a failure barrier in life. And obviously a lot of people that get to that point because of external circumstances, usually mental illness and whatever, they usually have a much lower failure barrier than most people. But other people, when they are in that homeless position, they go, nope, I should probably have a bed. I'm gonna try and figure out how to get a bed. That's where they get to that level, right? But the thing is, if you are homeless and in that situation, with or without that, like with or without you trying to get out of being homeless, with or without that little, little jigsaw piece of psychology, doesn't matter. The point is you're homeless now. The point is you aren't where you want to be in life now. And so you should enjoy that because where you are in a point of your life where you are successful, it comes with its own limitations anyway. So the whole point is to just bring the attitude with you. So if you are one of these people that just gets really upset about tiny things, essentially what's happening is you are not present in the moment. As soon as you're present in the moment, it doesn't really matter whatever the moment is. As soon as you actually are engaged with the moment, Unless it's like really extreme where like your, your Abdullah Avalon Garda kicks in and you're just like, oh, fight or flight, baby. Oh, oh, sorry, that was my mom. Even if, if you aren't in that situation that is, is that dire, that you're about to die, any other time where you have logical control over your brain to some degree, you can look at it at any perspective in life in any way that you like. Because again, Karens complain about the cap that doesn't have enough foam on it. Most people just look at it and go, huh, okay. And then they get on with their day. But that Karen, you know, is just gonna to complain to everybody about it. Not just the, let me see your manager thing. She's just gonna to go to work and she's just gonna be like, can you believe this? Does this look like extra foam to you? All day. I got a cappuccino, it costs 450. Uh, that extra 50 cents was for the extra foam. Even when I'm talking about it now, mimicking her, I think that is one of the other reasons that I don't like Karens because Karens are fucking annoying. <laughs> and so what you are looking for, and this is a constant practice in life, is to be satisfied with every moment of life. You can do it. You absolutely can. There are people, and you would know them, that no matter what situation they're in, they find it fun and amusing. They look at it in a different angle through the eyes of a child. They're constantly looking at every scenario that they're in and they're, and they're bringing a positive spin to it. The reason that you want to be doing this is for twofold. The first one is those are really your only experiences in life is your, the emotional setting that you are bringing to anything. That's pretty much the way that you're going to experience and remember that scenario. So if you walk into a party and you're pissed off, you're going to be like, everyone there was a cunt. If you walk into that party being happy, even if someone is a cunt to you, you're just going to be like, hm, what's wrong with that guy? Oh, yeah, this, this jock seems all right. I hate parties. I probably shouldn't give that example. <laughs> just be happy there, though. But that's what I try to do when I am in those situations. So when I am in all these situations that I naturally don't like as a result of reading all of these self-help books, particularly Eckhart Tolle's A New Earth, you just sit there and you kind of absorb it for what it is. You don't really try and judge the situation. As soon as you start judging the situation, you start moving into a negative spiral. At the very least, you should be looking for the positives in it, and you can definitely do that to perk up your uh, emotional state if you need to. But I think that this is just a really interesting way of looking at it. Just don't look at it in any way whatsoever. Just be in the situation. If your coffee didn't have its little... <laughs> I don't know why I keep using this example. But, you know, if it didn't have that little foam over the top of it, does that ruin your day? 
Well, it can, obviously, if you allow it to. But if it is ruining your day, you should probably look at the psychology surrounding that. Because if you start looking at that and just being like, well, that's bullshit. If you start going through your day, you will notice that you will find cues and reasons to be upset by tiny little things. If you are upset by one of those tiny little things, you will be upset by many of those tiny little things. I really think that that's a major reason that I was able to build the business that I've been able to build. It is, it is purely because I've been able to move my focus away from these little bullshit things that drain your energy more than most people. I'm not immune to it. I'm absolutely not. But at least I understand that one little piece, that one little piece that you should be constantly looking for the, I guess, I guess the, 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 the objective reality of every situation. And the objective reality of every situation in life is, it's not that bad. <laughs> There's very few moments in life that are awful. The rest of it surrounding it are kind of just this, yeah. so why not feel like that? Yeah. You can. It's really easy. It's called just like getting present with the moment. Now, I'll give you a couple of exercises to get present with the moment. Now, we've talked about breathing before. We've talked about just noticing other things in the room. But I think that this question really holds true. Eckhart Tolle talks about it all the time. He's saying, what is my relationship to the present moment? As soon as you ask that, you can just feel your head go and clarify. So maybe just write that down as your homework. That's it. Just ask yourself this question, whenever you feel yourself getting mildly pissed off or that you're in your head and you just start going into that state of just like flux and anxiety. And, and then usually what happens after that is that you just really, you look, this is a really good example. If you're in the present moment, you look at the clock and the time doesn't surprise you. If you're not in the present moment, you're not enjoying the moment, time will slow down. And if you are enjoying the moment, time will speed up, obviously, right? If you're in the present moment, however, it doesn't surprise you what time of day it is. Nothing really surprises you because it's all just unfolding in real time. It's a really good psychology to get into. It's a really healthy psychology to get into. And if you get into that, you won't get memed as being a Karen for the next week, I'm assuming, before that meme dies. I really don't think it has that much of a shelf life and I think I've missed it. Anyway, make sure you like the video for Karen memed. Yay! Give me more questions.